Welcome to Learn on the Go, a podcast from Community Care Inform, where we discuss research, theories and practice issues and look at what they mean for social care practitioners. I'm Natalie Valios, Senior Content Editor at Community Care Inform Adults, and this episode focuses on the Care Quality Commission's new duty under the Health and Care Act 2022 to assess how local authorities are meeting their Care Act duties. The assessment framework has nine quality statements mapped across four overall themes, which are working with people, providing support, how the local authority ensures safety within the system, and leadership. The CQC tested the assessment process in Hampshire and Manchester councils last year. The next step is for five local authorities, Birmingham, Lincolnshire, North Lincolnshire, Nottingham and Suffolk to pilot the process this year. To discuss this CQC role in more depth, my guests today are Mary Cridge, Director of Adult Social Care at the CQC, and Amanda Stride, Deputy Director for Delivery of Local Authority Assessments. So welcome to you both. Mary, let's start with the results from the tests in Hampshire and Manchester. Was the whole process tested and did it lead you to change anything as a result? For local authority assessments, our role is to assess how well a local authority is delivering its duties under Part 1 of the CARE Act. To test our methodology for this, we led two test and learn exercises in Hampshire and Manchester in 2022. This involved a team including inspectors, data analysts and policy leads. We tested aspects of our full assessment approach through the lens of two themes, how local authorities work with people, looking at the quality statement assessing needs, and leadership, looking at the quality statement learning, improvement and innovation. We found a blend of virtual and on-site assessment worked well, and we produced a short report scoring each local authority against quality statements. The reports were shared with the local authorities we worked with and their feedback has supported development of our approach to reporting on our assessments. In particular, it helped identify challenges for us to address such as how best to include user voice, understanding what good looks like and helping us in developing the way we write the report to ensure clarity. And Mary, I believe all 153 councils in England with the responsibility for adult social care are going to be assessed once during a two year period to give a baseline to start from. Uh, This was originally due to start in September, but you've recently announced that it will now be later this year. Are you able to say why it's been delayed and when these assessments will now start? So we're aiming to assess all 153 local authorities over a two year period to establish a baseline. We're currently running five pilots aimed at thoroughly testing our approach. Our local authority assessments are new and the single assessment framework we are using is also new. Our aim during the pilots is to learn as much as possible by working closely with the pilot local authorities and to feed that learning into our formal assessment approach. To get this right, we will be starting later in the year than originally planned and we'll be providing further updates as soon as we are able to. So turning to you, Amanda, what will happen once that two year period has finished? Will there be a rolling programme with a certain number of authorities assessed every year or will you only assess those which receive a requires improvement or inadequate rating? As you know, we are constantly evaluating our approach throughout the pilot. And so the aim is that we incorporate any of that learning into how our formal assessments will look. So when we've carried out the initial assessment of all the local authorities in those formal assessments over that two year period, we'll be able to understand how well they're meeting their Care Act duties. And that's our starting point. And then we will be able to begin our longer term approach to regular ongoing assessments. So it is a process that we are continuing to design. And how much advance notice will a local authority be given that they're going to be assessed, Amanda? So we're currently developing how we will select the first local authorities to be assessed. And we will be publishing more information on this, including how the process will work before we start any formal assessments. We will inform each local authority that they have been selected for assessment. And that will happen when we begin the assessment process. And the assessment process begins by sending out a request for information to a local authority. A local authority will then have a period of a lead in time before we do any fieldwork activity. And we're testing that time frame out in our pilots. Okay, great. So a lot is basically reliant on what comes out of the pilot test. 
So back to you, Mary, it's easier to envisage what leaders will need to do to prepare for an assessment, but will there be anything that frontline practitioners will need to do? There won't be a high level of preparation required for frontline practitioners. We will provide a briefing for the local authority to share with their staff, which we would encourage frontline practitioners to read. The briefing outlines information about what we are doing and why. When we are assessing, we will speak to frontline staff. What we want to get out of those conversations is to understand their roles, hear what they are proud of and what their challenges are. And rather than checking paperwork and processes, I believe the CQC will review evidence and data provided by local authorities via an information request, which you've already alluded to, before carrying out field work or on-site activities. So Mary, what will be the ratio of in-person inspection versus reviewing evidence and data? And will you be observing social workers in practice as Ofsted does in its assessment of children's services? Just as a point of clarity, we won't be observing social workers in practice as part of our assessment. This is about the local authority fulfilling their statutory duties under the CARE Act. There won't be a strict ratio. It will vary between local authorities. As we've said, we begin the assessment process by sending the information request to each local authority. We'll review evidence in advance to inform our assessment, including fieldwork activity. This information request is integral to the assessment process and will inform our fieldwork activity. When we carry out our fieldwork, we will be speaking to frontline staff and the amount of fieldwork we need to do will differ from one local authority to another. It is important that we test the process for the information return during these pilot assessments. This is to check that we're asking for the right information and are taking a proportionate approach. It's great. And it's good to get that clarity around social workers not being observed in practice. Thank you for that. You'll be aware, Amanda, that there was dismayed reaction to the news that CQC will use the single word grading system to rate local authorities of outstanding, good, requires improvement and inadequate. In April, we at Community Care conducted a survey and 83% of voters were opposed to this grading system. And many directors have said that they would like a narrative judgment instead what reassurance can you give them about this system? OK, so the government has asked us to publish our findings and to rate the assessments. So when we publish our ratings, we will publish the overall rating and the score for each quality statement, along with the narrative in the report. The score will indicate where a local authority sits within a rating, showing whether it's near the upper or lower threshold. So, for example, in a good rating, a local authority would be able to see, are they at the high end of good and nearly outstanding, or are they at the lower end of, of good? They'll be able to see where they sit. We quality assure all of our work, and so the local authority assessments are no different. We will be quality assuring our processes and reports um, to check that our view of quality is reliable. In the pilots, each local authority will receive a report and indicative scores for all the quality statements and overall rating. And we think it's important to make sure this is clear that these are not going to be their formal ratings and they are indicative that are determined through the pilot. In terms of our provider regulation, we know our ratings are very valued and, and they can be a valuable way of supporting improvement and as a simple way of providing a clear judgment of quality. And as I've said, what we do is we will make sure as we're publishing, we have very clear, strong quality control and assurance processes in place to verify our work. In the same survey, one respondent said that the CQC needs to speak to frontline staff without managers present or let them give their views anonymously during the assessment. Will there be an opportunity for one or both of these things to happen, Amanda? And, and if not, why, why is that? OK, so absolutely. We are ensuring we're talking to frontline staff without managers present during our pilots, and we intend to continue with that. We speak to managers separately so we can get those different views. And we're also in our pilots testing out how we do this and how we create more opportunities for frontline staff to speak with us. So, for example, in the drop in set settings and, and that kind of thing. So, yes, we do see it as an important part of our methodology. I think people will find that really reassuring. That's great. Thank you. And with councils under such tremendous pressure in social care and that pressure affecting each authority differently, how will you take this into account in your judgments, Mary? Well, the judgments are about local authorities meeting their statutory duties under the Care Act. The bar doesn't rise and fall against pressures, but we do want to understand local context. 
the really important thing is that each local authority understands what their key risks and issues are and have plans in place to address them, including managing risks to people's well-being. It's the awareness of the issues and the involvement of people that's key. We're also expecting to find some great examples of innovation and creative work out there, and we're keen to hear about them and share that best practice through our reports to support other local authorities. And another question for you, Mary. The assessment framework says that you will be looking at whether councils have arrangements for ensuring timely assessments, care planning and care reviews. Recent research by ADAS has shown that about 430,000 people are waiting for assessments, care packages, direct payments or reviews due to pressures on authorities. So how will you be judging timeliness? When we look at waiting lists, we are interested in the risk based approach and the impact for people. So we're thinking about questions like, does the local authority know who's on the list? Have they risk assessed and therefore dealing with urgent situations more swiftly? What are they doing about signposting people to other services while they're waiting? And we're also looking at the reasons for that wait, such as the impact of workforce. And back to you, Amanda. How far will you be able to judge a council's level of compliance with the sections of the Care Act you're assessing? Yes, so our entire framework and our approach has been designed and co-produced to do this. And I think it's important to remember that we have long experience of assessments at CQC and in regulation. So our pilots at the moment are allowing us to test our approach and we can make any necessary amendments for the formal assessment starting later this year. And the authorities involved with that pilot are involved with the evaluation to continue to help us with that. And the next question is also for you, Amanda, and I think it's something that people will be very interested to hear the answer. Do you know whether the Department of Health and Social Care has plans to bring in a system of intervention in authorities found to be failing by CQC and what this might look like? So if we find that a local authority is failing to perform its functions under the Care Act to an acceptable standard, we must inform the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. Following this notification, Department of Health and Social Care will be the ones who coordinate any improvement or intervention activity. And I think they have recently published an operational framework for adult social care intervention, which sets out more information on this. And Mary, what professional expertise or expertise by experience will your inspectors bring to bear in assessing local authorities? Well, our multidisciplinary assessment teams will include colleagues with a range of experience from within the adult social care sector, regulation and from within local authorities. We will also have specialist advisors and executive reviewers working closely with our teams to offer an expert peer perspective to inform the findings and judgments reached during assessments. And we're also using experts by experience to support us. As an example in the pilots, we've tracked a small number of people who use services and with their permission, experts have talked to them about their experience. And finally, Mary, how do you hope adult social care will benefit from these CQC assessments? Well, we hope our assessments help to drive improvement and parity of esteem for the adult social care sector. We will all either use our local authorities for social care at some point in our lives or a loved one will. So it really matters to everybody how local authorities are functioning and how they are delivering on their duties. And our public reports and ratings will enable people to see what their local authority is doing, how it compares to others, the current risks and challenges within that local authority area, and the impact it has on local people. The knowledge people have from those reports about what their local authority is doing means they'll be able to hold them to account for things where they might not be doing as well. And we can also showcase best practice and innovative ways of that local authorities care for and support people. It feels like there's a lot riding on these pilots and I'm sure everyone's going to be really interested to see what comes from them. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. So I want to thank Mary and Amanda for explaining how these new CQC assessments will work. I'm sure you will have answered many people's questions and hopefully dispelled some concerns. You can tune in to other Learn on the Go episodes on Inform Adults on a range of topics, including personality disorder, strength-based practice, homelessness and safeguarding, and the menopause in the social care workplace. Community Care Inform subscribers can access additional resources and written transcripts on the Inform sites. And if you're listening to this on a podcast app, you can subscribe to the series there. 
We hope you've enjoyed this episode and found it useful. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.